In this video, we're gonna talk about flash crashes. Specifically, we're gonna talk about the flash crash that occurred on the GDAX exchange on June 21st, 2017. The crash happened on the ETH USD currency pair. Now, I wanna use this as an example that can show us the importance of what we've been discussing thus far regarding placing our orders. What we're gonna find after we're done discussing this particular flash crash is that we're gonna have a strong reason to always use limit orders and never use market orders, and in particularly when we're placing stop orders. Let's go ahead and have a look. Before we take a look at this still image, I want to flip over and show you a video of the flash crash occurring in the GDAX interface. I want you to watch the trades on the right in the chart as the crash occurs. So those are trades actually occurring. Each time that chart changes, like we discussed in the previous video, those are trades. So last trading prices. And we saw it trade down to 10 cent. Let it restart and we'll watch it just again. It's at $317 and quickly it flashes down in a matter of seconds down to 10 cents. So that is an actual trade that occurred at 10 cents. Now, if we look over at the order book, we can also see the composition of the order book changing. Let's watch one more time. Now, this time, instead of watching the price, watch the order book. You can see the order book dried up on the buy side. There were barely any buys. The highest buy on the order book was 10 cents at that moment. And then you can see it starts to recover. Now let's flip to the still image and just kind of talk for just a second about what we can see. We can see here in the image, this is five seconds after the event occurred. So after the flash started occurring, we traded down to 10 cent. And then we can see here that the order book has vaporized. We only have some orders sitting on the order book at 10 cent. At this point, any market orders that come in to sell right here, they're gonna go to the best bid. And you can see that the best bid is 10 cent. That is a good reason to not be using market orders. If you were to place a limit order at this time, you'd be unaffected by the fact that the order book, the buy side order book has vaporized. But if you place a market order, you're saying, I'll take any price, whatever the best price is. And currently you can see on this order book that 10 cent is the best price. That is why we wanna stay away from market orders. We wanna be using limit orders. So let's keep talking about this flash crash. I wanna flip over and take a look at a Reddit post regarding the flash crash. So let's take a look at this Reddit post. We can see the title says, GDAX just sold a good chunk of my ether at 10 cents each so this is definitely not something that you want to actually see for yourself in your account but let's see what this person describes so i had a stop order at 36 that's 316 dollars when gdax went down for whatever reason all my ether was sold at the highest at the time price available when i logged in and saw a small usd amount i thought it was a hiccup check the fills and indeed it was sold at 10 cents there is no way this will be reversed right question mark if that's the case i believe i will be leaving the crypto market until it stabilizes. Just lost 3K in the blink of an eye. Now there's a couple of things I wanna point out about this post. The first thing is this would not have been able to happen if that stop order at 316 also had a limit price configured. As soon as Ether traded at or below 316, GDAX created a market order for this particular account. Now at the same time, the buy side order book dried up all of the orders vaporized and we had the highest order on the order book was at 10 cent when this order executed it had nowhere to go except to release to sell at 10 cent so a limit order would have prevented this from happening and you'll see that down in the comments if you look at this post there are people discussing the second thing that i want to point out is this statement here i will be leaving the crypto market at least until it stabilizes although crypto markets are newer and although gdax is a newer exchange flash crashes happen on other mature exchanges as well this particular incident is not specific to GDAX. Let's go ahead and take a look at this tab that I have open, Flash Crash Wiki. Now here, I've scrolled down to the occurrences section, and we can see here that there are multiple different occurrences of flash crashes happening. There was one on the New York Stock Exchange. There was one flash crash of the Euro versus the Swiss franc, and there was another flash crash with the British pound. So these types of crashes generally have been occurring, okay? And this is because these things are running on computer systems, and computer systems have a tendency to glitch every now and then. The main point to take away from this is that we need to be protecting ourselves by configuring orders using limit prices. What I want to do next is go ahead and show you a clip from CNBC when a flash crash happened with Procter & Gamble stock. Procter & Gamble stock flashed down from about $60 down into the 40s, about a 30% drop. Procter & Gamble is a huge company. The market cap of Procter & Gamble is around $240 billion. Now to put this in perspective, Bitcoin right now is trading around $80 billion dollars in market cap so this thing is about three to four times the size of bitcoin and it even had a flash on the new york stock exchange let's take a look 
We are going to pull up a chart as soon as we can. Here, here's a chart I want to pull up because what we're seeing right now, I mean, it, it, it maybe I, I believe maybe unprecedented. You're not talk about capitulation. Let's take a look at P and G. All right, this is going to say everything. P and G is now down 25 percent. Oh, well, that's true. If that okay. stock is there, you just go but and buy it. That can't ago, be there. A few that is not a real ago, price. That stock was down. Oh, just go buy Procter. All right, this is an unprecedented. Just go buy Procter thing. and Gamble. They're poor. So, decent well, quarter. Is there a hedge it. fund that is liquidating? Is there yeah. a distress yeah. sell or anything else? Yeah. I'll pay a 49 and a quarter bid for 50,000 Procter if I were at my hedge fund. I mean, this, I mean, is, that, this is a good opportunity. They were just taking the point. I mean, that's an incredible. I mean, that name. When I walked out, it was at 61 in the past well, see, four minutes. When I, when I walked out, it was at 61. I'm not that interested in it. It's at 47. Well, that's a different security entirely. So what you have to do, though, you have to use limit orders because Procter just jumped seven points that I said I liked it at 49. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you got to be careful. This When, when Rick Santelli was saying, look, you know, this is a dangerous market, what I am saying is you put in a 49 bid for 200 shares of Procter. If you get hit, right. fine. Now, a couple of things that I want to point out is some of the things that Jim Cramer mentioned. The first thing he said when the flash crash occurred in PNG is he said, that's not a real price. Now, what did he mean by that? He said, that's not a real price. What he meant was, was that there's some type of glitch occurring by real price. He meant you're not going to be able to enter into the market and actually transact at that price. That's what he meant by it's not a real price. If you were lucky and you had a limit order sitting on the order book down around that price, you might get a fill, but you weren't going to be able to just come into the market and begin transacting because the liquidity wasn't there. You weren't going to be able to transact really well in and out at that price. The next thing you're going to notice that he said, he said, you have to use limit orders. Now that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about using limit orders. And I just wanted to point out that he mentioned that there in the clip. The other kind of lingo that he used he said put in a 49 bid what he meant by that is put a limit order in at $49 for Procter & Gamble stock because the stock was moving so rapidly if you were to place a market order there's no telling what price you would actually get I hope that this video was able to shed a little bit of light on what we've been talking about in the past with the order types specifically limit orders now I know when we talked before we were kind of talking from a theoretical standpoint why you should be doing this this flash crash idea is a real thing that's been happening in marketplaces and it's a real practical reason why we need to be using limit orders. It's not theoretical. This stuff is a real deal happening in markets and it shows you dangers of not using limit orders, especially on your stops. What we saw with Procter & Gamble and what happened with Ether on the GDAX exchange, whenever huge sales come into the market, the market, the price is already dropping so rapidly. So if your stop gets hit at that point when the price is dropping rapidly, you're really gonna be in danger of getting a lower price than what you expect if you don't have a limit order in. So make sure to be using limit orders. And when you're using a stop order, you want to set a limit price because as soon as that trigger happens, when that stop order is triggered, what it's going to turn into a limit order if you have the limit price selected. But if you don't, it will turn into a market order. I hope this video was helpful. Please like the video, subscribe, and support this deep lizard channel. Thank you.